How's it going guys and welcome to today's video. I weaned calves out here yesterday so you'll have to excuse the background noise but today is all about working on this little manger. I've got my mobile welding rig all set up and I think I've got all the steel that I'm going to need to complete this project. That's what we're doing today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. I left off with this project last we got all of these square posts cemented into the ground and since then off camera I've gotten these pipes into the ground as well there was only four of these and basically the way that this is all going to work is these pipes those sections of the ring feeder are gonna bolt to these or pin to them and then between the pipe and the square post there's gonna be like a short bunk feeder right there so probably like three slots enough for three calves to get their heads in so we're doing that here from there to the next post and to this next one is just going to be a fence just a pipe fence and then we're going to do the same thing here it'll be a short bunk feeder to this pipe partial round on the end and a short bunk feeder on the end and then pipe on out this last square tube down here at the end, I think I'll just connect the fence to it, but I'm kind of leaving this open in case one day if I want to expand this and put another feeder or another spot for a round feeder uh, down here in the line, it'll be easy to do. I don't really anticipate needing to do that, but it'll be nice to have the option. Originally, I'd planned to use all three sections of the ring feeder in this line so that I could place three bales out. And the reason that I decided not to do that is because after sort of laying it out and measuring everything, I realized that to keep all those feeders under the roof like I want to, they were gonna be too close together and the calves would be pinning themselves in there and, and I just feel like it would have caused a lot of problems. This is gonna space them out a little bit more, give everybody more room to get in there and eat and having access to two bales at all times I don't see anybody going hungry. My first goal for today is to get this horizontal pipe welded in between these three posts here and then down on the end as well. When I do get that far, if I get that far, we'll see what time it is and maybe I can start doing the horizontals here as well. So with that being said, let's get to work.
I've got half of this little fence section done here and it's looking pretty good. The only problem, I cannot believe that I did this. This was only supposed to be a five pipe fence and I don't know what happened. I think I goofed myself up because I put this inch and a half pipe on the top. And anyway, I wasn't thinking and when I measured it out, it ended up being a six pipe fence. So I'm a little bit frustrated with that, but I mean, in the long run, it's actually gonna be a better fence. It'll be stronger that way. The pipes are closer together, so the calves shouldn't be able to get their heads through there. And I don't think that anyone ever built a fence and then thought, man, I wish that was weaker. So it will be better, but uh, it kind of messes with my materials now. Um, I think I'm gonna still have enough to do what I wanted to do today, but I will probably have to end up butt welding some of these pipes together, um, my drop pieces, in order to finish up this run. So live and learn, it'll be fine. And speaking of materials, what I'm using here, like I said before, this top pipe is inch and a half, and then these ones below it are one inch. They're spaced uh, nine inches apart on center, which gives about an eight inch gap in between or I'm sorry, uh, about a seven and a half inch gap in between. So that's looking good. The posts that I'm using here, these three inch square posts are uh, three sixteenths thick. So they're pretty, pretty decent. And these posts are two inch pipe. These are probably the flimsiest part of this whole thing, but they're gonna be tied in so many different ways that um, I think they're gonna be fine. They, they should be fine. And because I do get asked this from time to time, let me show you guys the equipment that I'm using and how I've got it set up. This welder is an engine-driven Hobart Champion 145. For what I'm doing, um, all this Corel work, which is almost exclusively what I use this thing for, it's perfect. It'll burn the thickness of metal that I need it to without a problem. For my 8th inch 7018 rods, I've got this set at about 110 amps, and that seems to be just about right. And speaking of rods, this is where I splurge a little bit. I use these Lincoln Excaliburs. They do cost a little bit more than your average 7018 rod, but while you're using them, you know where that money is being spent because they weld so smooth, so nice. They, they make a really pretty bead. My chop saw is a 14 inch Milwaukee dry cut saw. This uses a carbide tooth blade. And if you've never used one of these and you've only used uh, an abrasive chop saw blade, these are the only way to go. They cut through the metal like butter. They don't make everything hot. They don't throw sparks. Uh, I think we will see those abrasive wheel chop saws kind of go by the wayside because these things, these are the ticket. And that's my setup. I've pretty much built all of these corrals and all the stuff that you guys have seen me made using these tools. Um, it, it's amazing what you can accomplish with this, to me, pretty basic setup. So now I got to do the other half of this little fencing section here. It is exactly the same as the first half, so I probably won't film much, if any of it. And then we will move on down to the end and do the same thing here. Again, this is exactly the same as what I just showed you. So I may just snap my fingers and it'll appear to be done. The first thing that I need to do here is figure out uh, the length for a piece that's gonna weld to this square post and then over to the round post here. The length is pretty easy to figure out, but there's also a slight angle here because the round posts on the end had to be a specific distance apart to accommodate the piece of the round feeder that will eventually pin up to them. So there's an angle here and we're going square tubing into round pipe, so I'm gonna to have to make a little bit of a notch in that as well. So there's a few different factors at play here, but um, I think once I get this figured out, then it's just repeating it over and over because, you know, if everything's plumb and straight here, then all of these pieces should be the same.
Well, it's been a pretty productive day. I got um, both of the horizontal square tube pieces on these posts done. So for here, all that's left is the horizontal pieces and then a piece across the top here. And then this bay or whatever we want to call it will be finished. But I've still got to do all of that on the other one as well. Uh, that's not going to happen today. It's getting late. I need to get home. So we'll pick this up tomorrow. So now that I have got these horizontal pieces on the, I don't even know what to call half of this stuff, this mini bunk feeder on the end, I don't know. Anyway, now that these are here, I need to get my diagonal slats in here. And because I'm gonna be pinning that Lakeland round feeder here on the end, I would kind of like the spacing and the angles to all match. So after taking a few measurements, I can see that the Lakeland slats are on about a 25 degree angle and they are roughly 13 inches apart. That is not on center. That is the gap between the square tubing. So I'm just going to try to mimic that onto here so that when those bolt on that everything just kind of matches and looks nice. The big difference is going to be down here at the bottom. I'm not planning to put sheet metal here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use boards. All right, let's cut out some pieces that have a 25 degree angle on either end and see what we can do here. All of these angled slats are looking pretty good and pretty well spaced and straight and all the stuff that I like and look for. So I think these are ready to weld in now. I do take the time to put these short ones up here in the corner and down here. It, it, it makes a lot of extra work actually because this angled cut you can't make on a chop saw. Obviously you saw me, I had to do that with the bandsaw and then this one had to have that special 
angled cut plus a notch. So it is considerably more work. But to me, it's worth it because if you have these big gaps here, I mean, two things can happen that really concern me. One is if this one wasn't here, a calf could easily jump through that hole and, and I wouldn't be surprised if one did. And down here, if you don't have this little one down here in the corner, I don't think one's gonna jump through because it gets narrow here on the top. But now you've got a situation where multiple calves can get their heads through and you know if two or three of them get their heads through there then that can cause problems too so that's why i take the time to do those and yeah let's weld them in My structure built here pretty much I've got my angled slats my uh, angle iron down here to bolt the boards into that will fill in this hole in the bottom and the last thing that I didn't film was this uh, horizontal brace just sort of tying everything in together so all that's left to do here is put these boards on the bottom and then a few more little touch-ups and then we'll be ready to attach the ring feeder sections to the front of these and at that point i think we might be ready to put cows in here and test them out but i'm running out of daylight and time today so that's going to have to wait for another day um, so we will pick the video back up then it's a new day now if that's not obvious enough by looking behind me the fog has really rolled in today i'm hoping that maybe i can get this thing done today uh we'll see you know it's when i think about in my head what's left to do it doesn't seem like it's going to take very long but then when i actually go to do it it always takes longer than i think so uh, the first thing that i need to do is work on getting these boards down here on the bottom part of these bunk feeders to fill that hole in and once we do that we'll pretty much be done with this structure except for adding the ring feeders to the outside. I'm saving that for last because obviously I'm using the ring feeders right now. So I'm hoping to get everything up to the point where we're ready to put those in. And then if, if that is today, it'll be you know closer to the end of the day and they should hopefully be done eating here and we can start moving those over. If not, then I'll just have everything ready to do first thing in the morning and then I can actually feed them here tomorrow. In order to get to that point, I need to obviously do the boards like I just said. I need to finish this fence line and tie it into the existing fence line. Beyond that, obviously I need to clean all the junk out of here. Um, and by junk, I mean drop pieces of metal, the pile of concrete, the table, um, everything that I've been using while I've been building this. And then probably what will take the longest is I need to get the water trough set up here again. That's not the hard part. The hard part is going to be making a cage around this riser pipe, which I need to do before I can let cows in here. So as I list everything out, I feel like it's unlikely that we'll get that far today, but we'll, uh, we'll just start working and see where we end up. Since I'm using previously used lumber that I took off of that old corral fence, I'm gonna have to cut probably both ends of it off because most of these pieces, the ends are cracked. So I wanna try to get rid of that wood and get back into the good wood. And we'll put them up here and, you know, just kind of see how long they last. I don't expect them to last real long, but we've got them and they're still good for something. So we're gonna use them. A lot of times I get out here and I realize that I don't have a pencil, but I always have a knife. Hmm. 
Now I'm ready to attach these boards to these mini feed bunks. What I will do is I'll come through here with the tape measure and I mark out where all my bolt holes are gonna go so that everything is nice and even when we're all done. I'm very happy with the way that everything's shaping up here. This is actually very much like what I pictured in my head before I started building this. And that, that usually doesn't happen. It usually turns out way different than you expect. The only problem is that I've already done so much filming and there's still a lot to go before I can get these ring feeders attached and start feeding cattle here. That even though I know people hate it when you do this, I'm gonna have to split this into two videos because there's just too much to show. In the next video on this project, we'll finish up with the cage on the water trough, get this fence finished, get the ring feeders attached to these, and actually try to feed some calves here and see how it works. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Mm -hmm.